Good morning. Welcome to St. Joseph's Parish. This morning we are celebrating the third Sunday of Advent with the rite of the dedication of our altar. Please rise and join us in our opening hymn, number 41, on Jordan's Bay. Number 41. Sacrifice. 
place in Christ. May we respond to these holy rites, receive God's word with grace, share at the Lord's table with joy, and raise our hearts with hope. Gathered around this altar, one on, we draw nearer to Christ, the living stone, in whom we have become God's temple. But first, let us ask God to bless this gift of one act, as it is sprinkled upon us and upon the altar. May it be a sign of our repentance and a reminder of our baptism. God of mercy, you call every creature to the light of life, and surround us with such great love that when we stray, you continually lead us back to Christ our head. For you have established an inheritance of such mercy that those sinners who pass through water made sacred die with Christ and, re and rise restored as members of his body and heirs of his eternal covenant. Blessed is water. Sanctify it. As it is sprinkled upon us and upon this altar, make it a sign of the saving waters of baptism by which we become one in Christ, the temple of your spirit. May all here today, and all those in days to come, who will celebrate your mysteries on this altar, be united at last in the holy city of your peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Please join us in number 651, Flow River Flow, number 651.
our sins and enable us to offer an amending sacrifice of praise on his altar in heaven. Amen. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
many uh, Christmases ago, I gave one of my nephews, who was just a toddler at that time, a storybook about a baby monster who had trouble sleeping at night because he kept dreaming that there was a little boy under his bed. <laughs> my nephew's now a lawyer, so he's not worried about monsters anymore, but he's got new things to be afraid of. I remember that when I was a little kid, uh, for a long time I found it difficult to fall asleep when I was in my room by myself at night. And so the solution was this that I kept my door open to the room. I was the youngest of, of five kids. So I left the door open so that I could hear all the noise that was going on in the house, so that a little bit of light was still coming into my room, so that I could hear the TV going as it was still going in some other part of the house. And knowing that I wasn't alone, knowing that someone was near, even if I couldn't see them, I could hear them, and I knew they were there. someone was new. Now we've all had similar kinds of experiences, one kind or the other, about fears that enter into our lives and how we might find a solution at least to being able to fall asleep at night when those fears tend to overtake us. We all know the anxiety of feeling alone. We wonder perhaps at times whether anybody notices our plight, if anybody even knows we're there when we're having difficulty, whether anybody's going to come to our help. Sooner or later, as we grow up, we begin to learn that the first step when we wonder whether anybody's going to come to our help is to ask for help, to reach out to somebody who will give us an open ear and an open heart. And very often, in the very act of unburdening ourselves, we begin to feel the help for which we were looking. Now back in the days of the prophet Zephaniah, who was our first reading this morning, and later, in many similar ways, in the days of St. Paul, people had lots of reasons to be fearful. For example, Zephaniah prophesied in the days of the reign of Josiah. And there was lots and lots of chaos left over in the kingdom following the reign of the king who was before him, Manasseh. And so the selection that we have today from the prophet Zephaniah is celebrating, in a sense, the survival of a very small but also very faithful remnant of the people of Israel. This was reason to rejoice because there was a small remnant of the people of Israel who had been faithful to God and to recognize that God had been faithful to them. They've come through some very tough times, this remnant of Israel. And in the midst of their difficulties, they discovered the presence of God. In the midst of their difficulties, they discovered how God was near to them, and so that therefore there was no reason to be afraid. Now, as we saw in our reading, the second reading last Sunday, also from the letter to the Philippians by St. Paul, St. Paul was writing that letter from prison. Now, that's really fascinating. Here's, here's Paul in prison, and certainly imprisonment brings anxieties of its own. But Paul says to the Philippians when he writes to them from prison, Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again to you, rejoice. And then he explains to them, reason why they should rejoice. He says, the Lord is near. It's the same thing Zephaniah told the people of Israel. The same reason that there is no reason to fear is that the Lord is near. Rejoice, says Zephaniah, and hope, says Zephaniah. The Lord is near. There is no further misfortune to fear. Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice, says St. Paul. The Lord is near. They were so conscious of God's 
nearness. Yet both for Zephaniah and for St. Paul, their fears melted away. God is here, they said, and he's not going to go away. And because he is near, right beside us, even if we don't always see him with our eyes, we can be secure, we can be at peace, we can calm our fears. In other words, they knew that even if sometimes God's promises seem far away, in times of special difficulty in our lives, even if God's promises seem far away, the God who made the promises is always near. And so we can always have hope. God is always near. God is always in our midst. Now, the readings today then give us a kind of internal hope in the presence of God. It's kind of an inward movement to the teachings of today's readings. So that we can have inward peace and inward calm knowing that God is near. But there's, in a sense, and also kind of an outward movement to these truths that our readings teach us today. If interiorly we were told that we can be at peace, there's something that we're also supposed to do externally in response to the fact that God is near. And that's what St. John the Baptist told the people who came to him. John was preaching that the Messiah was near. And so the people said, well, what should we do? The Messiah is near. What are we supposed to do? And here's what John the Baptist said to them. Don't cheat anybody. Don't threaten anybody. Don't accuse anybody falsely. Share your food and your clothing. Whoever, you're, whoever you are, he said in so many words, whatever your job is, do it honestly. Do it with love. Do it with compassion. That's how we are to respond to the fact that the Lord is near. In a certain sense, he said, how could anybody stand in the presence of God and the nearness of God and not know that we are to live our lives in a way that's consistent with the nearness of God? Well, the and I today are wearing these rose-colored vestments. It's a tradition in the church that on the third Sunday of Advent, which is Gaudete Sunday, which means rejoice, we wear rose-colored vestments as a sign that the Lord is doing precisely why we wear these. It's a symbol that the Lord is here. There's reason to rejoice. That's exactly what Zephaniah tells us. Tells us. It's what Paul tells us. It's what John the Baptist preached to those who were waiting the coming of the Messiah. Maybe that's a good way for us to look at Advent. God is always with us. He's standing guard over us. Not in the sense that he's looking very with scrutiny at us to watch every movement to be sure we're not doing anything wrong. To the contrary, he's standing guard over us like you moms and dads and grandparents stand guard over your kids. To be sure no harm comes to them. And for your kids and your grandkids, kids like me, little, knowing that you were there, I could fall asleep. Knowing that God is with us, we can all rest in peace. Now, in just a moment, I'm going to dedicate and anoint and incense and light this beautiful new altar that you have. The altar in the church is always a symbol of Christ. The altar is always a symbol that God is in our midst. But not just any symbol. Precisely because, as you'll see momentarily, the altar is set apart as something extraordinarily special and holy. Christ is present at the altar. And we celebrate the Mass on the altar. And it's from the altar that you'll receive the body and blood of Christ as your food. And then from the altar we reserve the Blessed Sacrament in the tabernacle, right in the center of your church. And above the tabernacle you see your beautiful new crucifix. All of these sacred symbols in the church are our
reminder to us in the one hand that God is near, but then within the tabernacle itself, God himself is present. Not just a symbol, but God himself is in your midst. So as we watch all of these things happen today in the liturgy, as something made by human hands is transformed into something that is God's and God's alone, think of the words of Zephaniah. The Lord your God is in your hands. You have no further misfortune to fear. Think of the words of St. Paul. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. The Lord is God. I guarantee you, without a shadow of a doubt, after we finished our liturgy today, you will know that the Lord is God. And my prayer is that every time you return to church here in St. Joseph, you will remember that and hear in the nearness of God, you will find peace. Here, God, you will find and hear from God exactly what it is that he asks of you. To live in a way that's consistent with God's very presence in your face. I believe in one God, the Father of the way, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one God.
make our prayers acceptable to you. May this altar be the place where the great mysteries of redemption are accomplished, the place where your people offer their gifts, unfold their good intentions, pour out their prayers, and echo every meaning of their faith and devotion. Grant this, Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be to you. Please join us in our chorus that are printed on the handouts we handed you at the entrance, the bodies of the saints.
we praise you and give you thanks. For you have established the sacrament of true worship by bringing to perfection in Christ the mystery of one true altar, prefigured in those many altars of old. Noah, the second father of the human race, once the waters fell and the mountains peaked again, built an altar in your name. You, Lord, were appeased by the fragrant offering, and your rainbow bore witness to a covenant refounded in love. Abraham, our father of faith, wholeheartedly accepted your word and constructed an altar on which to slay Isaac, your only son, his only son. But you, Lord, stayed his hand and provided a ram for his offering. Moses, mediator of the old law, built an altar on which was cast the blood of a lamb, so prefiguring the altar of the cross. All this Christ has fulfilled in the Paschal mystery. As priest and victim, he freely mounted the tree of the cross and gave himself to you, Father, as the one perfect oblation. In his sacrifice, the new covenant is sealed. In his blood, sin is engulfed. Lord, we therefore stand before you in prayer. Bless this altar, built in the house of the church, that it may ever be reserved for the sacrifice of Christ and stand forever as the Lord's table where your people will find nourishment and strength. Make this altar a sign of Christ, from whose pierced side flowed blood and water, which ushered in the sacraments of the church. Make it a table of joy, where the friends of Christ may hasten to cast upon you their burdens and their cares, and take up their journey restored. Make it a place of communion and peace, so that those who share the body and blood of your Son may be filled with his spirit and grow a new life of love. Make it a source of unity and friendship, where your people may gather as one to share your spirit of mutual love. Make it the center of our praise and thanksgiving until we arrive at the eternal tabernacle, where, together with Christ, high priest, and living altar, we will offer you an everlasting sacrifice of praise. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We now anoint this altar. May God in his power make it holy, a visible sign of the mystery of Christ, who offered himself for the life of the world. Please be seated. Thank you. 
her ascend as incense in your sight. And this building has filled with fragrance. So may your church fill the world with the fragrance of the right.
shine on this altar and be reflected by those who share at this table.
partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your judge spread throughout the world and to infer the goodness of charity together with Benedict XVI, our Pope, and Peter, our Archbishop, and his assistant Bishop Isidio, and our retired Archbishop Raymond and Alex and other clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us how we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Pastor, with St. Joseph, St. Anne, St. Joachim, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be full, heir to be the life and make praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the suffering of the land. Lord,
Please join us in singing Panje Lingua found on page 111. It's song number 25. Oh. 
once again, it was wonderful for us to see the consecrated altar and also we are possess, uh, possession for blessed sacrament around the church. So very, uh, very, for me I feel very moved in my life. But see the Christ himself journey with us in our church. So as Bishop mentioned that the altar, Christ is centered and right now the altar become holy. Let's go happy every time we say come gather together and Christ in our midst. And before I know that uh, the mass long, but I just uh, last Thursday I just mentioned to ask Bishop that uh, by the help of him and with God birth the new land. And uh, you know that next to us about six six point two acres and cost us two hundred sixty thousand dollars. And I told ask Bishop that by his prayer and by his support. Miracle will happen. And he looked at me and smiled and said, Yeah, I think that's a miracle for us. I told him that five years, another miracle. So, the miracle that today that we ask will come to us. The one miracle. <laughs> And I know that you are hunger, but I know we have prepared for lunch. You know that people yesterday prepared lunch for you. you come to the hall, eat it very easy. You know, yeah, you can go this door, or get out the door there, and then turn right. And if you not get there, that's how not responsibility about your lot. <laughs> you go to the parking lot and get your car, that means your problem, not my problem. <laughs> so, the aspects will be around here, and this is a chance for us to talk with him. Okay, um, he is my uh, a pastor, and he loves to hear from you, and he loves to hear from your concern, and you're happy or you're not happy, just share with you. <laughs> I know that I've been five years here, you know me well, but the Archbishop, that means I think that we will love to see you. That's why right. the journey and journey and apply the dear journey of water. Right now, this is water the Archbishop here. So, again, thank you, Archbishop, to be generous. I know that your schedule is very high, but you love us. And I know that every time I ask you, you look at me and say, I look my kind of, but I try. I know that we try very good and after that you here. And after that we are very know that the pastor among us, the leader among us, I know that um, we're very happy. We know that we are good shepherd. You are good shepherd and I know that you worry about Christ and the people. I see that. So that your concern and also you worry about the vocation. I know that our special very focused on vocation. Every time we go, we talk vocation. So I know that one, please see, please stand, uh, Addison, and see, thinking about enter to religious. So I mentioned to you, Archbishop, I mentioned that, I hope that when I live here, at least few people become priests of religious life. That's my prayer. I know that you agree with me, but we need more priests, more sisters, and other sister must be here, so that good side for us. So you know that we are community. I know that you are very focused on vocation. And once again, Archbishop, welcome to St. Joseph, and we are very happy to see you. Thank you, Archbishop. Welcome, Archbishop. You can see what uh, care the church gives to the blessing and dedication of an altar and a tabernacle. That it says to us how important these uh, articles in our church are. And so it reminds us that every time we return, you are privileged to see this. And years and years from now, you'll take your kids and your grandkids who are here with the altar and dedicated. Because this is the time when the grace of God and work in the church makes something fully that was made by human hands. One more example of how that happens. And so it's a great privilege for me as your Archbishop to do it, but also for all of us to be present for what for such a wonderful celebration. So I thank you for the privilege of being here with you. Uh, I also want to uh, say that uh, I, I thank Father Khan for his uh, kind words, but uh, I also think that you have a good shepherd in your pastor, Father Khan Nguyen. So let's thank him for his wonderful words.
now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth the Mass is ended. Please join in our closing hymn, number 50, in your blue book, People Look East, number 50. Thank you. 